Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am your host, Saucy McFoodlefist, and my voice just cracked. In the last one, we uh, have some potential buyers for the house and we had and they found the letter, the letter that says help me. And it's a chain letter and we don't know who it's from. It could be possibly from the ghost of the house. But anyway, let's just get into it, shall we? Uh, and pick up where we left off. Um, it doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not. I've caused trouble and roads can be quite unforgiving of behavior like this. I'm almost at the door when she catches up to me. Isabella, wait! The apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face because her expression instantly shifts to something gentler, even her eyes softer, a fond smile spreading on her lips. Hey, I'm not angry. I know. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. Come on. You didn't ruin anything. It's not like we haven't ran into any problems before. If we don't get a deal today, we can always try on a different day. And... look. She hesitates, completely trailing off, before shifting her gaze down to her hands, a, a small gesture to stall. Her fingers are fiddling with a piece of folded paper. The letter? It's that stupid letter again, see? My hands stiffen when she gives it back, but I take it, nevertheless, more as an automatic response than any desire to have it back. I'll throw it away if I can. Why? But I have this nagging feeling one way or another. It's finally, or I'll, it'll find its way back to me, regardless of what I do about it. Rose, this is... You have to let them know about... I know you want us to get this sale so badly. And we've made a lot of plans on how to go about this. I mean, who wouldn't? This is the first time I've been assigned to a property like this. I've sold plenty of houses before, but nothing like what we have here. It's a beautiful house. I'd love to get one of my own if I ever win the lottery. Yeah, like that'll ever happen. But I think... Look, here's the thing, Isabella. If we are going to do this, work on something... I don't know, this... big... I need you in top shape. And the way you are now... My mind stops. What? Wait. No! I can still work! I just need to get myself together. That's what you said earlier. I let it go because I thought, Hey, it's your own body and you should know more than anyone how you feel. But after this, I really think you should take a break. You're... you're kicking me out?! No, I'm not. Look, all I'm asking is for you to take a seat somewhere I can see you, and let me handle this for now. You're clearly not yourself, and I honestly could use some time not worrying when you'll fall over or not. The day's not even over, and I'm already feeling the stress. Please, humor me just this once. She clasps her hands together in front of her, eyes pleading for understanding. And I do understand, to some extent. That doesn't mean I'll feel any less awful. Whether at myself, at the unlucky turn of the situation has taken, or for her, I don't really know. I promise I'll give you a full report of what happens after. I'll even let you take the lead tomorrow. Fine. Okay. I'll step aside for now. You're upset. A little, yeah, obviously. If it's any consolation, I won't tell the boss about today. You know how he is. Please, don't. I don't want a repeat of the lecture I got during my first assignment. Okay, so we have some backstory right there, so... This apparently has happened to Isabella before. I find that to be interesting. He called me a noob, and I don't even know what that means! 
If you don't know what noob means, Isabella, it's 2020. Come on. <laughs> at, at the memory, we both burst into helpless giggles, earning us strange looks from the guests milling about the door. Talking and laughing like this, it's easy to forget any mishaps that happened. Little things you learn to appreciate, I guess. So, are we good? <clears throat> I'm still not okay with it, but Rose has a point. It's better for me to step out of this one now. for now. I won't be able to help you anyways if I keep getting distracted like this. Maybe I'll just take a walk outside or something while I wait for you to wrap things up. Please, just stay put. I insist. I'm not an invalid, Rose. You clearly have not seen how you looked earlier. It's not that bad. See, I, I wonder if, um, if I hadn't shown the letter to Rose, if she would be acting like this. So maybe that's part of the, the game or the decisions that you make affect the outcome, so... I don't know, just a thought. Color hasn't even returned to your cheeks yet. Just stay here, alright? Don't even think of going anywhere. Let me finish what I'm doing here, and then I'll take you back to Luxembourg myself to have that minor bump checked. At least wait for me to call someone who'll fetch you, okay? She's gone before I can voice one word of complaint. Left with nothing else to do, I find myself drifting back to the foyer. A few visitors linger in the area, some merely enjoying the afternoon sunlight streaming through the stained glass windows. Others can be seen admiring the priceless antiques decorating the room. One group of elderlies, gathered some way across from me, is occupied in a friendly banter about which one could which one would cost more to buy. A little argument here, an occasional laughter and teasing there. I smile to myself. The conversation reminds me of what I've been missing these past few months. Rose is probably right. I do need a break. Maybe this afternoon hang this afternoon's hangout will help. Speaking of, I should call Ash. It's a few hours early from what I've told him, but he did ask me to call me once I'm done. Besides, I don't have a ride back. He offered, so I might as well take it. Or bribe him into giving me one. Not that he'll ever accept the latter, personal convictions and all. Honestly, if there's something I find admirable about him, Despite his tendency to annoy the hell out of me, it's that. Well, whatever way works, a free ride is still a free ride. There's Rose's offer too, but despite what she says, I know she'll be busy for the rest of the afternoon, especially without me assisting. Bothering her for a small favor at this time is the last thing I want to do right now. A couple of minutes and a few prayers asking for a decent signal later, the call finally connects and... Shit! What's up, Bob Ash from Deluxe City? Baggers watch out, can't beat me. What? For trouble, better not lie. Shit, how I'm loud is this thing even? Pretty fly for an Asian guy. Sup, Bob Ash from Deluxe City? Baggers watch out, A sharp ring fills the entire hall, disrupting the pleasant and quiet that has settled. Soon enough... Heads begin to turn in search of the source, mine included. My eyes dart around the small crowd before zeroing in on a lone figure crouched behind the same group of old people checking out the decors moments ago. He is facing away from me, fumbling with something in his hands. But I don't need to see his face to know whose back it is. Oh, I'd oh I'd recognize the dumb parka anywhere. Without without bothering to end the call, I march towards him. After what happened today, I'm not really in the mood to deal with this. Of all the times to Ashton 
fray! What happens next is something I'll, I'll surely regret later for having not recorded. Ah! He jumps, lets out an undignified yelp, followed by his phone slipping out from his grip. It bounces from one hand to the other in a, in a poor attempt to catch it before ultimately falling flat on the floor with a resounding clack. I feel sorry for the phone and the floor. But it's not every day that you can catch someone like Ash off guard and get a reaction. Damn his stupid detective senses. I'll take every ounce of inner I'll, I'll take every ounce of victory I can get, no matter how small. Ha! Huh? An awkward pause passes between us. A blink. <clears throat> a cough. He makes a face. And then, in too quick motion, he ducks and retrieves his abused gadget, while a grin threatens to break out from my lips. He doesn't meet my eyes with his when he straightens, but a flush has crept up his neck and cheeks. In another universe, where we haven't known each other for five years, and suffering through his teasing isn't a day-to-day -day occurrence, chances are I'd find that adorable. Endearing, even. Unfortunately, this isn't that kind of world. The way things are, I'm already content to see him out of his obnoxiously calm and collected disposition. Hello to you too, scaredy cats. I could stand to be greeted like a normal person, you know. What? And miss that look on your face? <laughs> no way! Oh man, I should have taken a picture. I am so honored you find this funny. Is that how you treat your guests? I think I need to talk to your supervisor. Talk to yourself? You aren't even a guest here. What are you doing here in the first place? For a moment, he looks like a cat that swallowed the cannery. Er, the canary, not the cannery. He looks like the cat that swallowed the canary. Anyway, suddenly, checking every nook and cranny in his phone for damage or scratches seems to be, more an, seems to be a more interesting activity than explaining himself. Ash? I could be looking to buy a house. A mansion? Yeah, why not? Did you see the view outside? It doesn't look haunted to me at all. He's messing with me. Ashton, I am not in the mood. What are you doing here? He chances a glimpse at some point behind me. The parlor? Curious, I follow his gaze, but... Before I can figure out what has caught his attention, he places a hand on my shoulder and turns me back to face him. I just finished working on something, so I dropped by. I still don't see how his work has anything to do with why he's here. At my confused look, he drops the hand resting on my arm like he has touched something particularly hot and casually rubs the back of his neck. And I, uh... I said I'll see if I can pick you up. Turns out I can. Uh, free time and all. So here, here I am. Uh, figured you'd still be busy, and so I roamed around for a while. Oh, you should have mentioned that sooner. I was about to throw you out. Throw me? Hey, I was given a pamphlet. I think that makes me a legitimate client. We have mandatory sign-in sheets for clients, Ash. I didn't see your name on it. And you can't just roam around because it says open house. Normal people actually follow an etiquette here. Right, okay. I think I'll just go ahead and... No, wait. I wasn't really going to throw you out. Rose said... <laughs> Never mind. I was just about to leave anyway. Wait, what? Now? Something must have shown in my face because... He pauses and gives me a long, hard stare. Sometimes, I forget how easy reading people is for Ash, given how often he looks as if everything around him is a chore. I avoid his eyes, hoping he'll drop the subject and won't ask any more questions. The last thing I want is to tell him what happened, especially the part about the letter. 
In fact, he's the last person on Earth I'll ever tell... I'll ever think about telling it to, if I can help it. Sure, he's a dependable guy. God knows how many times he has helped me, even without me asking for it. But stuff like ghosts and the supernatural? He'll never believe... He'll never believe those, even if he hears it from a friend, except maybe if it's Becca. On a good day, the most harmless thing he'll do is give you an explanation why those things have no chance of being real. And at worst, he's insufferable. Hey, like me. He'll poke fun at you every single chance he get, he'll get. Ashhole. What did I ever do to him? He never does that to Becca or Zack. I can already imagine how things will go down the moment I spill a word of what I saw. Nope. Over my dead body. Before it catches his attention, I shove the letter deep into my bag. What's wrong? Nothing. Well, let's just go. Doesn't look like a nothing to me. We still have Zack's movie tonight, remember? It's still early. And didn't you say your shift will end around 5 or 6? What about... Hey, Isabella, wait up! A rush of air greets me as soon as the main door opens. Not the unu not the usual autumn drift, but it's still a welcome change from from the stifling atmosphere inside the mansion. Ash's footsteps are quick behind me. The soles of his the shoes thumping hard against the polished concrete in an awkward cadence as he rushes to catch up. He calls out twice, or calls out once, twice. The mansion still looms in the background. Whispering, calling me back, shadows beckoning. I don't look, ba I don't look back. We spend the ride back to Luxborn City in a relatively quiet manner, with only the radio's disjointed hum in the background to fill the silence. Occasionally, Ash will reach out to fiddle with it until the signal settles or it's on a respectable volume, but otherwise, he says nothing. Neither do I. However, if the furtive glances he's sending me are sending my way are signs, I know there are things that he's been itching to ask since we left the mansion. I keep my eyes trained on a pass on the passing scenery outside in the small hope that my disinterest will dissuade him. Here. All of a sudden he tosses me he tosses something at me from a small compartment on his side. It hits me clearly on the chin before I can make a move to catch it. The small package makes a soft landing on my lap instead. <laughs> Sorry. The glare I send him wipes the smirk about wipes the smirk about to form cleanly on his face. He clears his throat, focusing his eyes on the road again. I swear he did that on purpose. Ignoring him, I flip the half the half forgotten package on my lap. I won't say no to free food, but why are you giving away cereal bars? I always have one on my person, and you look like you're about to pass out back there. Have you eaten lunch yet? I don't even get a chance to deny it before right on cue, my stomach rumbles loudly, and an empty, gnawing feeling in my belly becomes noticeable. No surprise there. I did skip breakfast and lunch so I could catch Becca while she was on break. I was hoping to get a small meal after. I guess with everything going on, I just forgot until Ash mentioned it. It's not like the hollow feeling's new to me, though. Does she have an eating disorder? If anything, it's just one of those things I've gotten used to, ignoring over the years growing up. A thanks. Then I tear open the package and start nibbling on the edge of the bar. Apart from, acknowledge, apart from an acknowledging nod, Ash doesn't say anything after that small exchange. For that, 
I'm thankful. After getting an earful from both Becca and Rose, it's nice to be able to just sit down with someone who's not going to nag at you. How'd the open house go? The usual. We got a bigger crowd than normal because of the property's fame, but really no different from the typical open house. On second thought, it actually looks like a fancy party more than an open house. I've never felt so underdressed in my life. Weren't you there? I wasn't really listening. I should have asked someone to kick you out. No, you won't. And what makes you so sure? One, ever since you got assigned to this property, you've been freaking out about it. Rebecca's words, not mine. She's been complaining to me about how you talked your ears off, by the way. Two, despite your initial qualms about the place, you still took the job. Which brings us to three. It's been months since you last settled a deal, and you're short on money right now since you're back to your instant noodle diet. How do you even know about the last one? Rebecca. Anyhow, you're hell-bent on selling the mansion. Even if someone you know personally is in the tour group, you aren't going to just kick them out. Every single person who went on your open house is still a prospective client to you, even me. He's not entirely wrong. Oh man, I walked right into that one, didn't I? I hate you. I really hate you right now. <laughs> His answer is a small laugh. The kind of the kind that screams, I'm right, I told you so. I hate it when he does that. I'll have you know that there's already someone who's extremely interested in this property. So even if you express to any sort of interest in it, I don't think they'd be willing to let you have it. Too bad. Provided I don't botch the botch it with the rights. Ma'am Hannah, ma'am, oh, it's Hannah, ma'am Hannah in particular, didn't look too pleased with what I did. I owe Rose a big apology. I hope she likes free donuts. You don't seem too happy about it. I am happy. Doesn't this look like a happy face to you? No. Really? And here I was thinking you found another one stuffed in the sofa. Okay, so what is with this? Apparently, in a house that we were trying to sell before, we found a dead body stuffed in a sofa? Or is it the wardrobe this time? What's that mean? He meant that as a joke, but how close it was to the truth made my blood run cold and my own heart beat a heavy weight in my chest. At once, the letter in my bag feels a whole lot heavier, burdened down by my own guilt and apprehension. Yeah, well, things happened. Stuff the right couple might not be pleased about. No need to make a fuss about it. It's normal in the business. You made them angry? Not angry. Just stuff happened. Like? Things. Did they do anything? Your clients. The rights, was it? I can't answer that. At least, not without revealing everything that took place in the attic. Lie to them or change the subject. You know... It's hard for me to make a decision about this. I feel like changing the subject uh, is just as bad as lying. So I'm going to go ahead and lie to him about it. I turn my eyes to the passing view outside. Maybe if I remain quiet long enough, he'll get the hint. Seriously, what happened? You're already assuming something happened. I'm not. It's what you said earlier, and that's why I'm asking. What did they do? They didn't do anything, all right? It's... It's nothing. Work's just been stressful. My boss has been in a bad mood lately over a lost sale. Preparing everything for the open house has been tiring. And then there's the tour. You've seen how big the place is. I wish he'd just drop the subject and be done with it. It's not like he'll do something if I tell him. Outside, the sun has already started its descent, casting a vibrant orange glow on the tall buildings. I wonder how long before we reach the movie house. Zack has been pretty excited about his movie. I'd hate to ruin that for him. But right now, I just want this day to be over. Just so you know, people we interrogate often avoid our eyes when they're hiding something. 
I, I'm not hiding anything. I didn't say you were. Then why are you still asking about it? Your face is a lot more expressive than you think. Can you please just drop it? My voice becomes harsher and I've intended and my voice becomes harsher than I've intended and I immediately regret having taken that tone on him. As one would expect, Ash is taken aback but recovers quickly. An uncomfortable silence settles in the car while I find myself wishing I hadn't snapped at him like that. Stupid, stupid, stupid Isabella. It's the first time in months you got to spend with time with your friends and you're already messing things up. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell. He responds with, more, with nothing more than a nod, and I take that as a way of him dropping the topic. For now, if the way his jaw tightens is a sign of what he still thinks about the matter, if the way his jaw tightens is a sign of what he still thinks about the matter, okay. I just hope I can give him a proper answer next time. Time passes quickly between us in this manner, and before I know it, we're already at the movie house. Alright guys, um, we are going to end this episode off here. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, leave a comment, do all those things, and thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye everyone!